good morning all. So, as you can see, yesterday's efforts, we almost got to the river. This is where I got stuck. And then we had to rescue it with our own car. But, successful mission, because visitor parking, <laughs> Mr. Alex over there, I don't know if any of you know, a bit cosy, but we... <laughs> oh, van guest. Oh no, you made me cross my skis. is testing out his preheater for the first proper time. Where it is, tucked in there somewhere. But this is the kind of stuff you need if you're going to uh, come in a van up here. You say you're going to do a video about all of the things you've done. Yeah, I'm going to do a very yeah. exciting to see <laughs> oh, the coolant loops heating up. Oh my god. I'll have no need for it, but I wouldn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good fun. That is very cool. We're having a tour of the, the mega electric van. Very nice. We'll just, just show that that cupboard down there. That's all we need oh. to see. It's got a, a, a bit of blue. And then you know the kind of person we're dealing with here. I like electric. It's really nice though, man. It's a really nice, nice. van. Have you got a, a, like a van tour? You've got a YouTube channel, you should yeah, probably say yeah. that. So, uh, Mispronounced Adventures is my channel. Do you have like a, a tour of the whole van Not there? just yet, yeah, I'm working on it. I'm probably going to film it out here, I think. Okay. Because it will look cool in the background. Well, there you go, so, keep an eye out for that then. <laughs> that for a rig. Absolutely no chance ever is that happening. Oh, back in the caravan. But yeah, at least it's out. Couldn't get the tarp off. <laughs> it's frozen solid to the roof. There it is. But it survived the winter by the looks of things. Anyway, some of the doors were a bit stiff. <laughs> anyway, caravan. I'm going to build a bit of a deck on the outside of it, uh, maybe an awning, I don't like that, the tent awning thing that it has, it's just a massive faff and it looks horrible, so try and build something a bit better, nice wooden deck with a roll out awning or something off the side of this, get some solar going on, maybe a wood burner just to the side of you, there's a good spot for a wood burner, just need to get it all working basically. I forget who mentioned it but I do indeed have anti-slash gloves I completely forgot about and are very clever pieces of kit and if you're doing this kind of thing well worth having that is so wrong <laughs> so wrong just to prove a point on that yeah <laughs> not a dull knife and seeing as I'm sanding down an axe head that's getting ever sharper by the minute it's a good idea Hello everyone, welcome back to present day Sweden, it's the 10th of March, I just thought I'd pop on at the end of here and uh, go
go through our experience of being off grid here through the winter. It's been interesting. It's been a lot easier than last year, I can say that. The weather's been less crazy, granted, but it's still been minus 30 and under minus 20 for quite a while, so it's not exactly been warm, you know. I just wanted to quickly run through how we've coped with it because obviously here, being off grid, what that means is we've got no connection to the electricity grid. Uh, it's been disconnected. We've got no grid tied water. We do actually have water on here, but I've not fixed it yet. We need to figure it out. We've got a well feed somewhere over there and it comes in. It's a little bit broken. That's the job for this year. And we've got no sewage system or anything. It's just a house in a field, essentially. For heating, obviously upstairs, we've got the big fire. That does a good job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I went for that one. But it's also assisted by the fact that the walls are 35 centimetres thick and the ceiling's over half a metre. I don't know exactly what it is, probably about 60, 70 centimetres in places. And the floor's insulated between downstairs and upstairs as well. So it's like a cocoon up there. And that, in combination with the massive fire, is more than enough heat. It's been 30 outside and plus 25 inside. Upstairs is absolutely fine. Downstairs, the solution that I used, which was kind of a, just a temporary emergency thing, has actually worked really well. I mean, it's got us through. You can probably just about see on the bottom of that window over there, there's one of them sticking out. But we've got two diesel heaters down here. Chinese import diesel heaters downstairs. The workshop one is on 24 7 because I like it to be nice and warm in there and then there's one in the garage there's a third one upstairs that ducts downstairs so we do have three if we need three for when it's crazy cold and they have got us through they you know they've done a fantastic job I'm well impressed <laughs> but they're definitely not a permanent solution because it's very expensive to uh, use them obviously burning diesel price of fuel nowadays it's not cool but again it was a temporary solution to get us through the winter and they've done that and now there's only one on which is the workshop all the other ones are off and the way that we've been powering them we've got two separate power systems upstairs and downstairs the workshop one which does all the garage as well that's 12 volts and we've got 500 amps of battery and you know whatever else and then upstairs the battery banks double the size but it's 24 volts two completely separate systems so I can be in the workshop all day messing around with power tools and stuff and it doesn't impact upstairs during the winter there's no sun here so solar just goes out the window but you can see the panels up there on the roof there's about 1400 watts up there three of them feed upstairs one feeds down into the workshop and we've got some more on the wall just there which also do the workshop and now well actually from nearly three weeks ago we've not had to run the generator once that's how we got through the winter every you know three or four days we run the generator for a few hours to charge the banks up we just have mains charges connected it basically works the same as running the engine on that, that that works like RB2B, the generator. It's done the job, but again, not a perfect solution. We had to run it a lot more than I wanted, but we're going to work on that this year. Hopefully, going to get some new batteries. Probably going to look into lithium. I think that's the way to go for us, because we have AGMs in there now. But the chemistry of them and the capacity that you can use and everything just doesn't really work i want to get down to once a week running the generator so so i think lithium is probably the way forward but again that's a job for this year it's all learning you know and then water we've just been getting from marie's work actually <laughs> but that will be sorted out this year as well so i think this time next year or you know middle of winter we're going to be a completely different situation and life is going to be a hell of a lot easier as long as I fix the uh, the issues we've had. But all in all, it's been a bloody successful winter. I can't believe it. I mean, 
the only experience I have of this is obviously living in the van for three or four years, whatever it was, and to be able to apply that exact set, because the system in there is identical to the van. There's no difference, a bit bigger, you know, there's a bit more solar, there's more batteries, but it's the same. It works the same. And to transfer that into a house and it actually work just blows my mind to be honest it really does even though I built it all it still blows my mind every day when I'm in the workshop and flick on a bandsaw or whatever and it's being powered by batteries and the sun <laughs> it does tickle me every time and like I say now we don't need the generator anymore it's just powered by the sun so three weeks I think over three weeks now We've not had to run it 100% free power, which is mission success, I would say. So there you go, a little update on how we've got on with everything. You saw us pulling the caravan out earlier in the video, because that's the, uh, the guest accommodation, because we should hopefully have family coming over at some point this year. So we're going to be getting that figured out. You're probably thinking, why can't they stay in the house, the size of that thing? But... <laughs> You know, as you've probably seen, it's quite a unique building and actually our living area is only like, it's an apartment pretty much, a flat. You know, it's not that big and all downstairs is, you know, workshop, garage and infrastructure to keep the place going. So it's quite a unique building, but that's why I love it. That's why I did it in the first place. You see the vans in the background starting to thaw out slowly we've just got to wait a little bit longer and we're going to get them pulled out and start going through the motions of getting them on swedish plates if we can fingers crossed let's see how it goes but let me tell you our traveling days are not over <laughs> these two will be making an appearance again very soon hopefully but that's going to be it from us here apologies for the sunglasses it's insanely bright outside and my weak little eyeballs can't handle it, so I'd probably go blind if I weren't wearing them. <laughs> but I shall see you all soon. Catch you in a bit, everyone.